Ethiopia's ruling party secures yet another election victory. The opposition again claims the electoral process was fraudulent. Holding on to power, a prime minister who's been supported by the West for two decades in the wake of this contentious election. Will the support continue? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Mike Hanna. A landslide victory for Ethiopia's ruling party and its allies. Together, they've won 99.6 of parliamentary seats in Sunday's election. The victory means Prime Minister Meles Zenawi and his revolutionary Democratic Front Party will have been in power for almost 25 years by the time of the next scheduled election. Thousands of Sanawi supporters were on the streets of the capital Addis Ababa to celebrate the victory. The opposition parties, though, insist the vote was fraudulent, and some have called for the elections to be rerun. But, importantly, the defeated parties say they will not call for the mass public protests that followed the last election in 2005, in which Sanawi was also declared the winner after early results had favoured the opposition. A clear reluctance to repeat a period in which at least 200 people were killed and tens of thousands arrested. Within hours of the polls closing in this election, Meles Zenawi had already claimed victory and called on all inside and outside the country to accept the result peacefully. As we saw during the partial declaration of results, the parties who lost the votes need to recognize the decision of this proud nation and its people. And I advise them not to attempt to override this vote because I will not bow to pressure from foreign forces. So far, the international response to the elections as a whole has been far from positive. Human Rights Watch cited widespread irregularities during the campaign, saying, and I quote from its report, the most salient feature of this election were the months of repression that preceded it. The European Union observer Chase Berman agreed, saying the elections failed to meet international standards. The EU EOM considers that the playing field for the 2010 elections was not sufficiently balanced, leaning in favor of the ruling party in many areas. These shortcomings lead us to the conclusion that this electoral process falls short of certain international principles, certain international commitments. And the U.S. National Security Council spokesperson Mike Hammer had this to say. We are concerned that international observers found that the elections fell short of international commitments, the limitation of independent observation and the harassment of independent media representatives are deeply troubling. An environment conducive to free and fair elections was not in place even before Election Day. Well, joining us today to talk more about this in Addis Ababa, we have Simon Bereket, Minister of Government Communications. Jawa Mohammed is an independent researcher and regular commentator on Ethiopian affairs. He joins us from Washington, D.C. And also in Washington, D.C., we have Leslie Lefko, senior Africa researcher at Human Rights Watch. Welcome to all. Leslie Lefko, let's start with you. Your organization has been particularly critical of the election process. We've been doing research on Ethiopia for the past months uh, and looking at the environment in, in the lead up to the elections. And as, as you noted, we've, we've had a number of very deep concerns about the human rights situation and about the violations of freedom of expression that most Ethiopians have been subjected to. So these concerns are long-standing, and they go beyond the elections. I mean, the question for us is really what next? Will the Ethiopian government, now that it has got this victory under its belt, will it ease back on some of the repressive measures that it's been putting in place over the last months? Simon Bereket, let's go straight to you in Addis Ababa. First of all, your response to criticism of the electoral process itself. Well, uh, this uh, criticism is uh, absolutely baseless. Uh, as we all know that uh, Human Rights Watch uh, has no representative in Ethiopia. Um, th we have invited them last time to discuss issues and uh, they appeared. Uh, they uh, were not invited to observe the election. They have no institutional representation here and they are putting a big conclusion regarding our election. 
Um, so this is um, expected from the self-appointed uh, arbiters of uh, African elections. Uh, nonetheless, we uh, take all the fundamental factors that are put uh, in the European Union observation uh, missions uh, report, the African Union uh, uh, observers report, as well as the local civil society reports. All uh, in all, they tell us, uh, they confirm that Ethiopia has uh, conducted an election based according to the electoral law, which the European Union observation team ac uh, acknowledged as the um, appropriate legal framework for holding uh, democratic elections. They have recognized that we have an excellent, uh, competent, efficient uh, electoral board who implements the law. And we, they have also acknowledged that uh, the public at large uh, accept, um, um, uh, participated in this election in a vast, uh, with a vast turnout. And finally, they have the um, Mr. Berman has also admitted that there was no fraud in, in, in the counting. So taking all this into account, the factors attest, attest to, the, to themselves uh that this is a peaceful democratic and credible election of course we know uh, organizations like the human rights watch who have an axe to grind have have to say another thing but just to stay uh, with you though it's not just human rights clear. watch uh, both the u.s observers and the european union made very clear that it was the context, the process of the election itself that was worrying, not just actual voting day and the casting of ballots. They're looking at the election process as a whole, and that is their points of criticism. Um, regarding that, the factors speak for themselves. I can tell you, I can enumerate all the factors. Uh, for the last three months, there was an intense electoral campaign conducted both at the grassroots levels at the, uh, using the media by all the political parties. All the contending parties have used 500 uh, plus hours of airtime offered by the public media. Uh, for the first time in Ethiopian history, uh, the government has uh, uh, financed the parties uh, to just to, to be competitive enough to, to send their messages across. This is the reality in Ethiopia. So we have had nine televised debates that took place between uh, the ruling party and, and the opposition parties. Uh, what, can, what can one do? Uh, well, let's go except, to uh, uh, Jawa Mohammed such, such. in Washington, D.C. And 99% uh, in favor of the ruling party and its allies. That is an absolute landslide, uh, Jawa Mohammed. Well, I think this is really an embarrassing result for the ruling party, and uh, Prime Minister Malazi now he has lost uh, the little credibility he has, because this kind of result can be registered only under election conducted by dictators like uh, Castro and Saddam Hussein, and I don't know how the Prime Minister can justify this. Um, in fact, the, the Western and other allies of the Prime Minister will have a very difficult time explaining their continuous support for this kind of uh, behavior. Uh, you know, uh, elections to be meaningful, we need to have opposition parties that are competitive enough. And competitive enough means the government has to facilitate the conditions that are uh, 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 good for the opposition, and the government has to nurture the opposition. And what the government has done in the last five years has been a uh, complete contradiction of this reality. Uh, let's start uh, from the beginning. What they did was they dismantled the opposition party by putting the entire uh, leadership in jail. Then they closed their offices nationwide. Then they uh, put in jail the, the unifying uh, opposition leader, Bertuka Midaksa. So for the last five years, there has been no opposition activities. There has been no press. There has been nothing that could uh, uh, nurture the vo voice of dissent. So when we came to election, uh, really the results were pretty clear. But but even with that condition, it's absolutely unbelievable to imagine that a ruling party can win 99.6. This is not an election. This is pretty much a joke. Leslie Lethko, uh, also in Washington, D.C., uh, do you think that the result itself is indicative of widespread fraud? 
Fraud or pressure? I mean, I think it's, it's hard to know, but certainly what we have been concerned about is that voters have been put under extraordinary forms of intimidation and pressure in the months and weeks leading up to the election. So whether there was an actual need to rig on election day, I think that's an open question that, you know, the, the European Union observers will answer. But I think certainly millions of voters went to the polls on Sunday, May 23rd, knowing that they had to vote for the ruling party or else they might face very negative consequences, the loss of jobs, the loss of homes, uh, problems with local administration officials. We documented all these patterns in great detail in the run-up to the elections. So I think, you know, you can't underestimate the climate of fear in Ethiopia and the depth of fear of voters um, when they went to the polls the other day. Simon Berekit, a climate of fear in Ethiopia? Uh, no, no wonder this is an assessment of the Human Rights Watch because uh, we know that uh, when, when they issued the report on Ogaden, they have been telling us that uh, people who are alive and kicking are dead. We have proven them wrong by presenting all this uh, unfounded allegations uh, so if, if, if they say that uh, the voters will be evicted from their houses if they don't vote for the ruling class no wonder that is a pattern it's a blatant lie and it's, uh, uh, it has become customary to hear such such uh, uh, accusations based on, on uh, politically motivated uh, approaches. what is the reality in Ethiopia first of all uh, when, when one um, uh, measures the uh, democratic nature of the elections, I think basing uh, one's argument on, on, on uh, results is, is shallow. Uh, elections should be, be uh, measured based on, on the process. Uh, we know for sure uh, these are interested about the results, and the results have been in nobody's hands except the public, and the public has voted. We, as the ruling party, are also surprised by the result. We expected to win by 60, 70 percent margin, but it had been a landslide. And why? Because the public has lost of, of, uh, confidence, total confidence, and the message that the ruling party had, had uh, crafted to define this opposition was they are unfit to govern this big and uh, great country. Well, and let's take a true. look, uh, Simon Barricade. Let's take a look at the context uh, of this election. The Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front came to power in 1991, finally overthrowing the Mengistu regime after 16 years of civil war. Mela Zanawi headed what was called a transition government before being elected prime minister in 1995. Former U.S. President Bill Clinton called him part of a new generation of leaders who would bring democracy to the African continent. In 2004, Zanawi was also invited to be a part of former British Prime Minister Tony Blair's Commission for Africa. In 2006, he sent Ethiopian troops into Somalia to topple an Islamist movement that had seized control of the capital, Mogadishu. Through the years, he's been touted by his Western supporters as the key to stability in the region. Jawa Muhammad in Washington, D.C., do you think that this election is going to temper that unqualified support in the past? I think it should. Uh, look, uh, the only government I know in my life is this one. I'm 24, and I was hoping that there will be a gradual democratization. What this result has shown us is the government, particularly the prime minister, is determined to take the country back to the 1980s. And this result is only achieved during the Mengistu Haile time. It's really shocking. Now, everybody who is interested in Ethiopia and in the whole need to take this very seriously. This because this is a major, major backlash toward democratization in Ethiopia and very troublesome for the region. As we know, the situation with, with Egypt is intense. We have a situation with Eritrea. We have a situation in Somali. And this is the Southern Sudan situation. What this election will do is it will disencourage the people who are involved in the peaceful struggle and encourages armed resistance. If 
war breaks in Ethiopia, if civil war, the already uh, tense situation in Ogaderi, in Romia, and in the north, start to, to increase, we are going to have a very, very complicated situation. And it will be a security nightmare for the international uh, organizations and international community. If they continue to support uh, the Malas regime from now on, I think that will be a, a major, major uh, crime against the humanity in the region. Leslie Lethko, do you think that the support that has been enjoyed by the Ethiopian government in the past can be undercut by this? Or do you think that the strategic considerations of those entities will still continue to be the dominant factor? I mean, there's no question that Ethiopia is a critical partner for the West, particularly the United States, uh, but also the European Union, the United Kingdom. Um, and I think it will continue to be. I, I think the question is whether uh, those governments will start putting the worsening human rights situation more at the forefront of policy. And I think this election should be um, a, a, you know, a pivotal moment. It should be a benchmark where these governments who are partners of Ethiopia and friends of Ethiopia review their policies, because right now things are not going in the right direction. A, 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 an increasingly repressive Ethiopia is not a recipe for stability for Ethiopia or the region. And I think that is, at the end of the day, uh, the element that governments need to, you know, they need to reassess their policy. They need to start putting some consequences and some conditions on their support uh, to the government of, of Prime Minister Mellis. The support takes a very practical form as well. It's some billion dollars of aid a year two-thirds of which comes from the United States itself. Um, Simon Berekert, is there any concern whatsoever that this flow is going to be dampened uh, in any way? Uh, no, first of all, uh, let, me, let me put uh, things on perspective. I, I fully believe that uh, Prime Minister Malala Zenawi, who is a, uh, an able leadership, an able leader for Ethiopia, not only for Ethiopia, but has displayed a very big statesmanship in African uh, issues as well, uh, deservedly uh, gets its, his respect. Uh, I don't think any um, undermining or any, any um, bad-mouthing will, will, will uh, help uh, anybody in this respect. Uh, secondly, uh, I don't think at this point uh, Ethiopia uh, will be perturbed by any um, uh, such, such uh, threats, you know. Uh, the fact on the ground is Ethiopians have voted. It, they have voted, they know who, whom they elected, and they know why they elected this government. And uh, it is because this government has started transforming the country. It is because this government has brought renaissance in Ethiopia. It's because human rights, political rights are restored in Ethiopia and protected. The democratic space is broadening, not, not, not shrinking. We know for sure, for the first time, uh, in the last five years, there, are, there were several negotiations taking place between us and the opposition. We have had uh, several uh, laws improved with the uh, inputs of the opposition. The electoral law has been improved. The National Electoral Board was, was uh, uh, elected and uh, institutionalized through the participation of the opposition parties. Uh, so basically, everything is right. Uh, they are going right in Ethiopia. We cannot say everything is perfect, but we are on the right track. All right. Well, we just want to pick up some, on some specifics there. You said, for example, uh, discussions with the opposition in recent years, a reformation of the electoral law. Uh, Jawa Mohammed in Washington, how correct are these assertions? Has there been a greater degree of talking to the opposition? Has there been a real reform of electoral law? Actually, yes, uh, for, for the wrong, uh, to the wrong direction. What, what happened is they brought a, a new CSO law that prevented, uh, uh, completely took out the civil uh, society organizations, a new press law that killed uh, the very small uh, independent press. They also uh, reformed the electoral law to make sure 
almost everybody be, uh, who runs the election are pa uh, party members. Uh, and let's take the, the, the same negotiation between the opposition and the government. Even those oppositions who signed the agreement were harassed and finally uh, lost their seat. This was, uh, this was just a major, um, a major blow to, to even those who signed it. And it will be very difficult for this government uh, to convince anybody from now on to uh, get into agreement uh, on any, any, any law for the matter. Uh, actually, this result will be very, very bad for the progressive voices within EPRDF itself. Uh, why? In the past, because there were some critical oppositions, the, the, re the reformist or the, the progressive uh, EPRF members were able to uh, bring in some reforms. Now what we have is not only a 100% uh, 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 a, a kind of referendum for the prime minister where he can manipulate and even control almost everybody. So uh, it will be a major uh, 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 disaster for the next five years unless s some measure is taken to uh, correct uh, these uh, blunders. Leslie Lefko, is there any chance of any such measure being taken on the horizon, do you believe? Well, I hope so. I think uh, it's, it's hard to be optimistic at the moment, but I think if the government were to take certain concrete steps, like amending some of the very repressive legislation they've introduced, the press law, as my colleague mentioned, uh, the, the, the NGO law, if they were to amend some of these laws, uh, release some of the political prisoners, and take certain other steps, I think these would be very good signals um, that the government is indeed committed to democracy. In the absence of these steps, I think we can only assume that the human rights situation will continue to worsen. Simon Berricott, on the face of it, a massive win by the government. Is there any desire to perhaps uh, make those gestures that have just been mentioned, to give uh, visual signs, very tangible signs, of its ongoing belief in democracy and out of its powerful election victory, to use this as a basis for further democratization of the society? Well, uh, first of all, I, I disagree with most of uh, Jawar's uh, skin deep analysis based on shallow information. Uh, but that, as it may be, uh, let me focus on this. Yesterday, when the Prime Minister addressed uh, uh, Masra Ali, who uh, came out uh, from all parts of Addis and uh, congregated in, in the Muscal Square uh, for hundreds of thousands of them. He told them that um, the uh, next five years will uh, ensure, uh, ensure a rapid economic development as well as a massive engagement with uh, all the political forces, be they in parliament or uh, out of it. Uh, party, the ruling party has uh, clearly expressed its willingness to engage with all the political parties. Uh, because we know for sure there are people who have elected them even though they didn't give them the majority vote. Uh, so we know they have constituencies and we will work to, to, to uh, engage the constituencies as well as their representatives. Uh, we have uh, um, uh, declared that uh, the multi-party democratic spectrum will not be narrowed down by, by the uh, opposition in parliament or not. Uh, we don't see uh, uh, opposition parties, uh, when they lose elections, it doesn't mean the end of history. There, there is history to be made, and we believe um, the party, the ruling party is offering a generous, uh, giving a generous offer where we really engage them. Well, Even thank you very much indeed, Simon Berriquet. We have now... Um, at the end of this particular show, the next five years, an opportunity for the new government to uh, prove or disprove what its uh, critics might say. My thanks to our guests, uh, Simon Berriquet in Addis Ababa and in Washington, D.C., Jawa yeah. Mohammed and Leslie Lefko. And thank you so much for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. We welcome your comments and suggestions. Please email them to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. I'm Mike Hanna. Goodbye for now.